Welcome to Scoop News Group series on the new business of government. I'm Wyatt Cash, and we're here today with Tom Sisella. Tom is, um, has two hats. He's the Director of Army Architecture Integration Center and also the Chief Data Officer at the U.S. Army. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So uh, we're glad to have you here. We're talking about data. And one of the first questions I'd like to ask you is, um, we know agencies are dealing with more data than ever before. How easy or hard is it um, you know, for the decision makers not only to get to the data, but make sense of the data these days? Right, so you can imagine, obviously, it's very challenging, at least within the Army. It's a very big organization. We have lots of repositories of data um, with finding the authoritative data that actually you can utilize, right? So these days, I would say within the last three, four, five years, um, with the advent of more um, accessible data analytics, mm -hmm. uh, that the getting access to the data and making sense of the data, more importantly, right, has become probably a lot easier than it had in the past. Um, we still have a lot of people really focusing and pulling data out of databases, putting into Excel, pivot tables, manipulating data relative in manual ways. But what we're starting to see is really an adoption of what, what I'm going to call online business analytic tools that are attached to the databases mm -hmm. and can run the reports and slice and dice the data based on how the end user wants to see it, not how necessarily some data scientist views mm. the data as how it needs to be sliced. Uh, and it really, because the tools are easy to use, relatively speaking, if you have some sense of what you're looking for and you have some sense of what the data is, then it makes it easier for the end user to do that. Um, and so. I think it's probably better in that regard. Uh, the problem really facing us as IT professionals is, is there's a lot of data sources now. And mm. so finding which ones do you expose to these BI tools, which one do you train the functionals on, how to intermix and integrate the data. And the key challenge that we're facing uh, within the Army and probably the federal government at large is really uh, the integration of the data and the fusing mm -hmm. of the data more than just the access of the raw data. Mm -hmm. right? So, Yeah, well, we've been hearing that a lot with uh, folks in your position as the chief data officers, uh, that, that blending so you get the added values is not uh, an easy task. Correct. Let me ask next, um, uh, you mentioned a couple challenges so far, but what are the more specific challenges the U.S. Army faces in executing the use of data more for planning, budgeting, and uh, really forecasting activities? Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a couple, so uh, you mentioned three different things in, in the Army, they're kind of fragmented across those boundaries, right? Uh, a lot of the planning and forecasting from a four strength perspective is actually done in a different organization than the financial management side and okay. the, in the, uh, the, the what we're calling the programming or the planning side. Uh, separating the, what we call the year of execution budget, the money that we get and we have to spend on an annual basis versus the money that we're programming for, planning for to get in the out years, whatever mm -hmm. they might be. So those are integrated processes, but separate groups of people do that. And so because of that reason, we have separate repositories for them, right? Uh, and then we feed all that data up to OSD to big DOD, and then that goes forward as the DOD's budget. And so there's a lot of challenges there. We are uh, most recently starting to break down those walls uh, within the, the, the defense business system arena within the Army. We actually have uh, an integration capability uh, call it a data bus, as it were, okay. to kind of fuse these data elements together. And then we have a, a big data platform and a business analytics capability on the backside that allows users to go in and mine that data across the different repositories. But again, the challenge we're having there is authoritativeness and, mm. and integration of the data itself. So. Mm -hmm. Well, we also hear a lot about the notion of data-driven decisions, and so can you talk a little bit about how the Army is trying to help um, managers and different program directors uh, make more data-driven decisions around uh, budgets and or uh, plannings for activities? Sure, absolutely. So uh, again, it's all integrated into kind of the same set of services, as you will. So we released a data strategy about a year and a half or so ago, February 2016, that says, you know, the Army needs to make its data available and accessible and trusted and, and, and all the different uh, characteristics of data. So what we've done in the interim time is, especially on the ERP, the resource planning side, we've integrated a lot of those data sets and then added this uh, business analytics capability to expose it to the users. And more importantly, though, what we've done is we spent a lot of time actually analyzing what data was coming into the analytics platform and 
we have pre-canned some queries, if you want to look at it that way, or reports, however you want to look at it. And then exposing that infrastructure and that environment to uh, really anyone who either wants and or needs access to it. So that's one thing that we're doing. On top of that, we're also on behalf of the Chief of Staff of the Army working on what he's calling his dashboard, mm -hmm. which is really a readiness dashboard for, for, the, for the Army. How ready is the Army to go to war preparing for war? And so that counts many different things, budget being one of them, um, force strength, uh, equipment. Uh, and I always say for the Army, we've got a challenging problem because it's not just simply how many tanks are there, right? How many tanks are there? Are they adequately prepared? Are they ready for a battle? Are they in the right staging location to go to the battle, right? Do we have enough spare parts to fix them when they get there? Uh, it, it becomes a very exponentially difficult problem. And so we've just started working on this dashboard for the mm -hmm. chief to allow him to make data decision uh, uh, analytics kind of sort of things and exposing that to not only him, but the, the four-star commanders as well as the, the, the combatant commands as a way to kind of here is a view into what we believe to be ground truth, right? Mm -hmm. Again, the authoritativeness of the data being in question in some cases. Um, but we believe with what we've given to him anyway is high confidence data uh, sure. that, can, that a legitimate decision, life or death or otherwise, can be made upon. So. Well, certainly it sounds like you're able to get data um, aggregated and moved up. Uh, tell me how you're also helping managers be able to make better data-driven decisions um, as opposed to just the data analysts or the data scientists. Right, so one of the things we've done in the Army, uh, and I mentioned earlier uh, that the CDO position in the Army has been around since 2009, but it's been vacant for a while. So we actually established a construct to manage data throughout the entire Army, not at the most senior level, but kind of what I'll characterize as a mid-level. Mid uh, so we have the chief data officer and what we, what we call data stewards and domain stewards. Mm -hmm. And so what they're really responsible for is at their domain level, whatever it might be, whether it's uh, you know, financial management or accounts receivable or accounts processing, they are responsible for understanding their data and then making sure that they take the data strategy and make that data accessible and, and then turn around from, through the Army Data Board and say, hey, this is our authoritative source for troop strength, for example. Mm -hmm. And so the data stores are generally, uh, I don't want to call them mid-level, but they're in the, you know, the kind of uh, next level down of uh, echelon in the headquarters element to allow them to expose that data. And then we are uh, most recently, uh, now that I'm on board, uh, started working with some of the COCOM commanders and the, and the if, within the IT world, you know, the sixes, whatever they might be, the G6 mm -hmm. or the J6. Um, uh, to kind of work with those IT people and say, what are, what are your commanders functional requirements for accessing and manipulating data, mm -hmm. which is something that historically when we're focusing on the COCOM Army DOD-wide, it's really been about the war fighting effort mm -hmm. um, and intelligence data. So now we're saying from a business perspective, right, the, a lot of the COCOM commanders have realized that they really need to manage their budget more effectively, right, and apply resources based off of some predictive analysis from the intelligence community. Um, and so we're really trying to get them integrated with some of the financial planning and the, the palming and planning cycles of the DOD to kind of expose that data to them forward. And so that's actually being ha handled kind of at the, the mid-level of the organization and then promulgated up for decision makings and then obviously back around to the top of the building. Well, terrific. And lastly, uh, just very briefly, you, in wearing two hats, you operate in a vertical. Yes. And then you work on a horizontal yes. as the chief data officer. What's right. your advice to other chief data officers that are trying to work across silos to to bring greater um, value to the data that they're working with. Right, so uh, the number one advice is really build a coalition of the willing, right? Uh, that seems kind of patently obvious in many cases, but what I see is, and, and because I'm a kind of a long time IT person, as IT people tend to want to talk about IT things, right? Um, so in your coalition, you need to talk to the functional people that own the data in words that resonate with them and understand with them. You don't need to talk to them about data lakes or data buses or, or schemas or anything like this. It doesn't resonate with them. It's about what value exposing their data to the enterprise will bring to them uh, as a first, second, or third order effect, right? And then show them the business value of what it says, well, if we were to take your data and integrate it with this other repository, see how much better the data is or how more accurate or more timely the decisions can be made. So I think that's the, I guess that's two things, more than one thing, but the most important things that I can impart to any of the other CDOs in the environment. Well, terrific. Well, Tom, uh, thank you for sharing some of the things that are going on at the U.S. Army and the work you're continuing to do over there. Appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Great. Look for more of our uh, information and content about uh, the new business of government on our website. I'm Wyatt Cash. Thanks for watching.